Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a comprehensive guide on everything you need to know about the archers and archer play in general. Of course, I couldn't do this video alone, so I had to call up my good friend Leary, who's a multiple S tier winning champ, widely considered to be the best archer player in the world, and he's actually the guy who invented dodging ballistics for the very first time in a tournament. What's going on, Leary? <laughs> Pleasure to be here. A lot of people might not know me, as I'm not that active in the social media Twitch streaming scene. I actually got known first time when I played against Viper in the best of one back in the days, seven, eight years ago, and I managed to dodge ballistics. And that was like the first time people saw it and they lost their minds and said <laughs> it was the best of one. It was like a crucial moment to win the game. And yeah, that's basically why they call me micro nerd these days and all the other stuff. All right, awesome. If you guys want to see more with Leary, we're going to definitely link his Instagram at some point, probably in the description below so you guys can check him out. And uh, with, that, with that being said, let's go ahead and start off with our topics. We're going to actually split this video up into three segments. We're going to have a beginner section where we talk about the basics of archer play, what you need to know to even start playing with or against archers. Then we're going to have an intermediate section where we talk about how to fight very common you know, uh, fights that occur in real games, like archer versus archer, how to fight skirms, how to fight cab archers, mangonels, and scorpions. And then we're going to have an advanced section where we show off the coolest micro tricks with archers and the coolest little tips that you might, you know, want to know to take your game to the next level. With that being said, let's go ahead and start off with the beginner section. And we're going to start real simple with hitting and running, because of course, that is the bread and butter of archer micro. In this first example, I'm going to run my scouts directly at Leary's archers, and he's going to do the same, and nobody is going to micro. I'm going to just see what happens. Patrol in, hands off the keyboard. Scouts are in as well. My hands are off the keyboard, but my scouts are doing pretty well so far. As you can see, I'm mowing through the front line. Dude, the pathing is whack. The, the guy in the back is doing nothing, dog. <laughs> <laughs> But as you can see, I mowed down Leary's army and it wasn't even close. And of course, it was 5v5. This is not exactly a realistic scenario in terms of, you know, average resource cost. But it's actually a very realistic scenario uh, in terms of what you see in a real game. Because by the time I get five archers, opponent, you probably have around five scouts. All right, now we're going to show you guys the exact same scenario. Five scouts versus five archers. And we're going to see what Leary can do with micro. And we'll see what the trade looks like at the end of it. And of course, I'll commentate what Leary is doing. And then he'll give you the guys the explanation on why it's a must at the end of the fight. As you can see, Leary's going to now hit the scouts and then run back when his units are not shooting. We'll break down exactly why this is absolutely mandatory after the fight. And you, as you can see, he's already killed two scouts and he's now working on the third one. And his archers are still rather healthy. Now, the fight is still looking good for the scout player. But as you can see, with three scouts already dead and Leary cutting back and damaging even a third one, this fight went a lot better than the first one where Leary was just standing still. It also gives him a chance to use the natural elevation on the map, which is a nice plus for the archer player. So as you can see, that last fight went way better for Leary. He managed to kill three scouts, weakened the two remaining ones, and actually ended up with a pretty decent trade despite losing the fight. Now, what actually happened there, Leary, and why did he have to do the hit and run? How, how did it have such a big impact? So why every player has to do this is basically because of two things. First of all is the attack delay, which is basically how long it takes to get the shot off and to shoot the arrow. And the second thing, which is usually longer than the attack delay, is the reload time, which is basically how long it takes shooting one arrow after the next one. And during those times, during those two delays, you have to move. Yeah, so basically <clears throat> when Leary shoots his shot, there's going to be a certain amount of time for the delay of the shot. And then the reload time st starts as soon as the shot is off. So in that time, as soon as he has to reload, instead of just standing still and taking free hits from the scouts, Leary is moving, creating distance between himself and the scout. Even though the scout moves faster, the scout will still have to you know, move a little bit before getting off another hit and can't just stand there hitting freely. When Leary finishes the reload time, he then takes another shot and repeats this process. The point being that when he's able to shoot, he takes a shot and when he can't shoot when he's in that reload period, he just moves instead of standing still, creating distance and causing the scouts to deal way less damage. Alright, so as you can see in that first fight as well, there was a lot more going on than just the basic hit and run. Leary was actually targeting the same scout until he killed it, and this is a really big factor when it comes to archer play versus melee units. This time I'm going to show you the same fight, and this time Leary will just hit a random unit every time and won't actually focus down the unit until he kills it. I'm going to patrol in and we'll see what happens. All right, Leary, you got this. <laughs> Do no <your> pressure. Worst. <laughs> Do your worst. As you so see, this is what most players will end up doing when they use stop or patrol hotkey. The archers will just randomly shoot the closest target 
And while you get out some damage as well, the issue with this is that every scout get weakened, but every scout from him can still hit my archers. So he still leaves with five scouts, arguably they're lower HP than three full HP ones. But the issue is at the highest level, people are going to abuse that. They're going to explore the whole map with it. They're going to heal them up and get the most value out of them again. Yeah, and you actually didn't kill any units. So if he heals them up, it's like you did nothing. And even if he just takes five scouts to your base, even if they're low HP, he'll still get more value out of the scouts this way. Definitely locking down a target and killing it first is really good for value. But not only just value, during the fight, when there's five alive, there's five of them constantly hitting you. And if you guys are familiar with Spear of the Law videos, he mentions this law a lot, the Lanchester Square Law, where it states that if your opponent has, or like the more army that you have, to put it in simple terms, the more damage you're putting out and you kind of snowball the fights because you're dealing so much damage. So if it's five scouts remaining, five scouts doing damage, the archers will slowly take worse and worse trades as one archer falls after the next and the scouts are still alive. And so in this case, Livery might have done more damage as he spread, the, spread it out, but he was dying way faster and the end result is absolutely terrible terrible for Leary and he probably just lost himself the game. So yeah, obviously what you're gonna see is every player will micro back the archers as you don't just want to run into the scouts while you're reloading, otherwise this happens. So always kite away as much as possible when you have to reload and do the attack delay so you take the least amount of damage possible. Yeah, it's nice to show how that looks because as you can see, if you if you miss click and you go into the enemy army, it's absolutely disastrous and you take so much more damage. <laughs> so that was perfect to show the, the viewers what happens in that case. Uh, all right, perfect. Moving on to the next top topic now. All right, now we're going to show you guys a really easy method on how to deal with mangonels if you're a beginner. So this is the most basic way to deal with mangonels. And we're going to show you guys what you shouldn't do first and then what you should do. So as you can see, Leary's going to be in land formation. I'm going to walk up with my mangonel and we're going to see what happens if he just takes it and just goes for the fight like this. As you can see, because he's in a line formation, he's really grouped up and he's going to take massive shots to the mangonel. And this is what happens to a lot of the people when I coach them, is they try to take fights against the Mangonel, but they're not quite at the level where they can dodge, and they're taking much, you know, much more damage than they have to at, you know, at first. All right, now we're going to show what happens if Leary does the same thing, but in staggered formation. I'm just going to run up and right click, and he's going to do the exact same thing, and you'll see him taking much less damage. As you can see, the units are much more spread out, so my Mangonel will get some damage as Leary is not really microing. This is, again, a very beginner, very basic. But he kills the Mangonel and survives with a lot more of his units. Even if I got the last shot off, I'd kill maybe one or two more crossbows. And he's more or less happy with that trade. If you do the cost, this is not the end of the world. Now, even at pro level, we still do the staggered formation. When would you do staggered formation even in pro level here? So basically, I used this as well when I was a beginner. It's very simple and very effective, especially if you have like other things, more important things in quotes to do. Mess, uh, fix your messy economy. You have more important units to micro, etc., etc. But also one scenario which we're going to go right after is when you have so much army that it's unavoidable to not take any damage. So you just have to limit the damage you take. All right, so now we're going to show you guys what, what's going to happen if Leary is not using staggered formation and he's got like 30 or something crossbows patrolling across the map. If there's threat of multiple siege weapons on the field, this is what literally could happen to your army and it could be a game losing mistake. As you can see, he patrols forward and because he's in line formation, he's going to take some literal game ending shots here, losing most of his army. He might even lose all 30 of his crossbows. To two it, not even one kill. <laughs> Leary, what was that? <laughs> not again. <laughs> so, of course, now Memphis is going to play the Titanic, and it's an absolute disaster. Let's show you guys what Leary could do to avoid potential disaster. All right, this time Leary's going to patrol the same scenario in staggered formation. Keep in mind what Leary said earlier as well. Even at pro level, right? This is good tips for beginners, as we're not going to expect you guys to know how to split against Mangonels yet. But even at pro level, sometimes you're just doing other things. You're patrolling across the map in staggered formation instead, and, you know you just avoid this kind of big disaster. Let's see what happens. He's going to patrol into my two Mangonels. Same scenario. I'm going to take the best shot I can possibly find. And as you can see, I'm still getting a nice shot and a decent amount of crossbows go down. Still potentially a good trade for me, but it's not a game-ending mistake from Leary. He just might have taken a pretty bad trade. And in the end, two Mangonels versus like five to six crossbows, maybe eight crossbows at most. You're completely fine with that trade. And there you can see how staggered formation is really good. And the same is true against Scorpions. I'm going to show you guys a few scenarios with those. All right, same scenario. We're just going to go ahead and jump straight into the staggered formation now. You guys saw from the Mangonel just how devastating it could be if you're in line formation. Same concept with the Scorpion. In staggered formation, you don't let the Scorpions land 
and big shots. And as you can see, just by engaging the scorpions like this, the scorpions are pretty much rendered useless. I killed one archer for two scorpions. This is not a good trade at all. If it's in line formation, you're going to see that the scorpions just get way more value. And there's just no reason to take the fight in land formation when you can just simply take it in staggered formation. It requires zero micro. You just have to click the button and you take really good trades against Siege, which is what you're going to encounter a lot in the rank ladder. In the intermediate section, we're going to show you guys how to out micro the Scorpion and the Mangonels and beat them without taking a slither of damage. But of course, for now, for the basics, this is definitely something you should keep in mind. Okay, next we're going to talk about patrol. So, Liri, why don't you go ahead and explain what patrol does, and then we'll show you some examples of why you'd want to patrol in certain cases. So, patrol is basically a very easy and simplified way to micro units. You literally select your army, and then you patrol to the part of the map where you want your units to go. And then as soon as they face the first target, no matter if it's building a unit or something else, it will they will start firing. Yeah, and as you can see from this very basic example, I had to go up and then take a shot, whereas Leary, as soon as he got in range, he was able to start shooting with all of his crossbows. And this is obviously a really good way to move around the map. If you move around with patrol, you always take a decent fight as soon as you find it. If you move around without patrol, you better hope that you're looking or else you're going to take a really bad fight and you're not going to realize it. And this is, of course, a disaster. All right, so as Leary mentioned, patrolling across the map is definitely the way to go. If you're ever moving from one area to the next with archers and you can't you know 100 be watching your army just simply patrol you can also use attack move by the way it's the same thing the only difference is patrol the units will come back and attack move they'll just go there and stay there so whatever one's comfortable for you they both achieve the same thing but whether you patrol or attack move across the map i highly recommend you do so instead of just taking your army and right clicking across the map and that way if you counter enemy units you start fighting them right away Patrolling can also be used in late game scenario where you have ballistics and both players have like 50 units or 40 units. Instead of hitting and running, which will require a lot of overkill, you're going to just go ahead and patrol and you'll take a much better fight. Let us show you guys how this looks in a practical combat. Okay, so now we're going to show you guys why you need to patrol in late game fights. Basically, hitting and running is really good for small groups, you know, 5v5, 10v10. But when you both have ballistics and you both have 40 units, of course, let's go ahead and show you what it looks like if one guy just goes for patrol and one guy goes for the, you know, the hit and run tactic. And as you can see, the patrol will be way better. They were just going to patrol and I'm going to run in and try to hit and run. I'm going to shoot, then run, shoot, then run. And you'll quickly begin to understand why his method is more effective. Because we have ballistics, his shots are always landing whether I'm moving or not, right? As long as we're not dodging ballistics, which, which we'll talk about later. And he's killing multiple of my units, whereas every volley, I'm only killing one. And this is a really big deal because I'm doing a lot of overkill damage. Overkill is basically when you shoot multiple arrows at one unit and you only need like seven arrows to hit to kill one crossbowman. But I'm starting out by shooting 40 arrows at that one crossbowman. So a lot of those arrows would just be left over, not dealing damage. And as you can see, it's an absolute disaster. So I highly recommend that in late game, you just patrol in all your fights and you keep your archers at the back dealing as much DPS as possible. Hitting and running is something you do in the mid game and you know when you have very few units one thing i forgot to mention is actually unit stances we do talk about stances throughout the video i'm sure but i want to get a quick explanation so you guys know what we're talking about there's basically two main stances you can use for your archers either on aggressive or stand ground in aggressive they basically act like this if they are sitting still and they are an aggressive stance if a unit comes close to them they'll actually move out of the formation to go attack that unit this could be good or could be bad you can run into enemy tc you can run into danger zone when you're not looking but you can also get extra damage because you're running and attacking so it's good and bad uh, the one i recommend though is stand ground basically just means that if your archers are standing still and they're in stand ground they don't move out of their formation so if a unit comes their way they'll attack it as long as they're in range if they're not in range they won't move to go attack it i think this gives you more control over your archers and i recommend stand ground for your archers generally speaking that's going to be the end of this video i hope you guys enjoyed it if you want to check out the intermediate and advanced section of this archer play and take your game to the next level definitely consider checking out my patreon i'm going to leave a link in a pinned comment down below so you guys can get access to the rest of the video i put a lot of work into this with leary but i hope it's going to be nice and high quality for you guys to enjoy a proper guide uh, there's also a ton of other content on my patreon so you definitely get a lot of value if you go for that subscription and of course if you guys want to see more content like this make sure to like comment and subscribe i am planning to make another guide like cavalry maybe one for infantry maybe even one for siege and monk play but this one took a lot of work so i want to see how the views do on youtube and if you guys enjoy it i'll definitely bring you guys more high quality guides like this one and we'll up the level of all of us together Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.